Hey, hello everyone. I'm City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. Coming up on this show, celebrations for Hispanic Heritage Month kick off and find out about the rental assistance program that's helping keep people in their homes. Here to talk about this and a whole lot more is the councilwoman who represents Ward 3. You know who it is, Olivia Diaz. Welcome back. Thanks, David. How are it's you? always great to be back on the set with you. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. The six weeks goes by quick. It's good to have you back. It's a on whirlwind, let me I know, tell you. I know. You have done a lot <laughs> in the six weeks since you've been on the show last. We're going to talk about that and, and a whole lot more, as I just said. But in case you're not exactly sure where Ward 3 is located, well, have no fear. We're going to show you. Ward 3 is right uh, in the center of the city. And it also encompasses a lot of the downtown, the arts district, kind of the things that are really clicking and happening in Las Vegas often are in Ward 3. So you got to be very proud of that. I am very proud. Yeah. <laughs> very excited to represent. So this is a big month. Uh, we just kicked off Hispanic Heritage Month. It's well underway. It starts September 15th through October 15th. And you kicked it off with a big event at City Hall, didn't you? Yes, we did. Um, it was on September 14th and we invited many members from the community, many folks that work here in the city. I did it in a partnership with the Mexican consul uh -huh. um, and so he invited a lot of the different consulate offices that are global um, and so we just had a great time. We invited talent like the Las Vegas High School, Maria Chihoya, um, and uh, we had some folkloric dancing. Uh, we had our very own um, Marshall, uh, Ms. Loera also singing she us sang. a few I was really songs, impressed. Officer yeah. Loera. So um, we had a great time and uh, we had some good eats <laughs> as well because it wouldn't be a festivity uh, without having some uh, delicious Mexican cuisine, um, part, you know, finger foods. And so uh, I think uh, COVID, through COVID-19, David, we're craving spaces mm -hmm. to kind of come together. I, I love that we had it outside in our Now Cafe because it's outdoors. And then as people wanted to get food, they went in adjacent mm -hmm. uh, the cafe. And so um, we all just were super excited, I think, to have a mini reunion of sorts and see each other because it's been it's a long a while. while that yeah. some of us had seen each other physically. We yeah. see each other maybe through the screen, through a phone, but yeah. Those not. Those WebEx meetings, that, that many, many WebEx face meetings. Face-to-face -face social interaction is yeah. priceless, right? You know, and we've got a, a great a partnership with uh, the Mexican consulate here uh, through COVID and everything else. Uh, he's been with us through... Very active yeah, member yeah. of our community, wanting to make sure that we give everything to the community that co the community needs in times that we've been living through, right? So making sure that there's access to COVID testing, to vaccinations, he's just been there side by side, making sure we offer it. Yeah. And then uh, the following Saturday, a uh, big Hispanic heritage event out at Gary Reese Freedom Park. Yeah, and um, so this time we teamed up with Hispanics in Politics to do this um, Hispanic heritage celebration. Um, we sometimes, you know, forget to celebrate all the great cultural um, contributions that different communities because you know yeah. we're Latin America it's not just right. Mexico but we have people from El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua so that's all Central America yeah. and then further south you go yeah. you got Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Chile, um, Ecuador I mean we have so many amazing folks from everywhere living here in Las Vegas and what greater opportunity to celebrate those you know, cultural contributions, whether it be cuisine, whether it be music, whether it be <laughs> right. um, folklore, we, we bring a lot. And uh, we also had amazing um, escaramuzas and charros. So that's a very Mexican tradition of riding horses. The, the, the ladies are the escaramuzas, so they're in their elegant dresses, uh -huh. riding horses, and the charros are all dressed up. Um, and, and so it's, it was really cool to see them kind of take the flags out in front as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's just the beginning because now there's still several weeks of Hispanic Heritage Yeah, it go. continues yeah. through October 15th. <laughs> so we have a full long month celebration and uh, we just wanted to start it off right. Yeah, I think you did. I think you got a great kickoff there all the way around. Of course, Councilwoman, we also had a big anniversary, 20 years. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, this morning I began my day reflecting on the losses that we suffered and the sacrifices that were made on September 11th. And, and you, were, you know, I were saying before the show, it's, it's hard to get 
your head around the fact that it's been 20 years since the initial attack. I just can't believe it, but I think that all of us remember, David, where we were oh, when yeah. we were seeing those news feeds coming in of the plane crashing into the tower and then the second one crashing. And, um, you know, I worked with someone the, you know, following year, couple of years later and saying that, you know, it was just a very difficult time for all of those in New York City trying to figure out if their loved ones had been affected, if their friends and family had made it out. And I just was kind of reading on everything and, and trying to learn more about everything that went down on that day and just the valor it took for like the fire department yeah. to go in and take command right away and try to save as many people as yeah. they could. Um, some firemen never made it out, no, right? 343 um, never made it out. Yeah. And then you have over 1,000, I don't know, 400-ish people's remains who have yeah. yet to be identified. I mean, Terrible. they never came back home, so we assume, but they haven't received confirmation. Those loved ones haven't received confirmations of them passing in, in that event. And so, but I was really pleased to see that day um, that we held our traditional yep. services here as a city that we also received a seedling from the Survivor tree, tree yeah. that survived. Yeah. They, the, the firefighters uncovered it and then from that tree they donated it to the Parks and Rec of New York City right. and then due to 1st October they gave us one of the seedlings right. to have here and I said wow. And then that piece that you guys all saw in the video right. of that charred metal that's all distorted, it's actually part of the World yeah. Trade Center and its remains as well and so we have a little bit of that here right. so I hope that if you haven't um, had the, the honor to stop by. It's at Fire Station 5 yeah. here in the city of Las Vegas. That's right there at Hinson and Charleston. Uh, the cool Springs city. Preserves yeah, too. It, yes, if exactly. you're in the area yeah. of the Springs Preserves, not a block away. it's yeah. not too far from there. Yeah, that's exactly right. So yeah, Tim Szymanski, you saw from our fire department, organizes that. They toll the bells in the fire uh, service. The tradition of tolling the bells is what happens when a firefighter dies in the line of duty. And of course, we had 343 we firefighters lost many. Uh, die that day. So, yeah. um, and we also had a celebration, uh, or not a celebration, a remembrance out at uh, Police Memorial Park, same day. We have actually, we got two seedlings from the survivor tree. One's at Fire Station 5, and the other is out at Police Memorial Park. So it was planted on that day as well. It was kind of cool to hear that some of the children of firefighters that um, lost their lives, all became inspired yeah. to become firefighters yeah. themselves. Something, and so, it's really isn't that interesting yeah. where the yeah. children knowing wanted the dangers, step, yeah, knowing the dangers still, that go with it, yeah. You know, stepped up to mm -hmm. do this public service. So, um, I applaud them yeah. for continuing to serve the yeah. community and to take care of their, their fellow man. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, and then, Councilwoman, I love this too. Uh, we love when new businesses <laughs> get going in, in the city. Well, you know, Vegas is the marriage capital of the exactly, world. So exactly, exactly. We've got to keep that title. So, so you posted this on Facebook. You said, Love is in the air. I had an amazing time welcoming Charlie Nardi's Get Married Vegas to the Container Park. So tell us about this. Yeah, so Reverend Charlie um, has married over 3,000 couples, um, different situations, different reasons why they finally wanted to say <laughs> I do, but she tries to make it extra special and marry folks wherever they ask her to, whether it be at the container park, maybe at the top of the slide, maybe at the <laughs> bottom of the slide. She's very flexible. Where, wherever they pick the place, that's where, where she marries them. And she's right there at the container park. You can stop by. And it's not the only type of ceremonies or services she does. So you got to definitely, if you're at the container park, check her out, see everything she offers. And she's super excited and devoted. She lives downtown as well. Super excited to be able to live, work, and play in Ward 3. Container Park, very cool. It's uh, Fremont and 7th, 8th Street, somewhere in there. Yes, yeah, 7th. And, uh, and uh, yeah, really cool. Great shops, great food all around there, too. And and now you can get married there if you want to as well. Make sure you check so. out the Container Park and, and yeah. the Praying Mantis. That yeah, Breeze Fire. fire. Yeah. It's, it's a classic it, here. It, it is. It is. And it's uh, all in Ward 3. Yes. And then uh, Councilwoman also coming to Ward 3, uh, Desert Oasis Apartments had a groundbreaking. This is a big deal. Housing is really tough right now. People are having a hard time finding, especially affordable housing. A lot of people are being squeezed out. Their rents are escalating. Um, this particular uh, Desert Oasis, it's a, a Desert Oasis 2 phase. And so they already offer um, some affordable housing options with services mm -hmm. for the senior community. And they're going to expand their offerings um, 
in terms of what you just saw, uh, Georgia Caicos mm -hmm. did the first one, now we're doing the second one. So many partnerships really took place to um, make sure that this penciled, the city, the county, yeah. HUD, um, some banking institutions, Volunteers of America, I mean, it really takes a lot of collaboration and cooperation to see something like this to fruition. And then David, we don't even have that many more. I, um, I think we're looking to add, I don't know between, I, I can't ex exactly recall, but it's somewhere in the 40 to 70 more units uh, for our seniors in them. our community. And them. so um, just, we need them now, but yeah. we'll hopefully be ribbon cutting in the next year and a half. Yeah, that was the groundbreaking. And yeah, so yeah, about 18 months later, new place to live, that's yes. great. And then Councilwoman, uh, great program. Didn't know anything about this until you really filled me in. But the RTC and the library district, you were part of a, a kickoff of a, of a partnership to basically open the library without even having to go to the library, Yes, right? and um, I, I gotta say the library district board and the new executive director, kudos to them for wanting to be more creative and um, remove barriers between folks in the library, right? And so all of us have a personal device. <laughs> all of us go on it all the time. And they're making that extra step to have an app called Libby where people can go and actually when you have your library card, you go on that app and then you can be checking out online resources. Wow. So there's movies that you can download, there's audible books, there's books that you can probably sure. read um, and music and so many other iterations of things that I'm probably not, uh, magazines, online magazine subscriptions. Uh, uh, um, books in Spanish too, right? uh, Yes, yeah, and yeah. they have over 200,000 items available to the community in Espanol in wow. Spanish and so I highly encourage all of us to rethink our habits um, and and be proactive about when we're stuck in traffic what could I be doing in a productive manner yeah, that doesn't make listen. me mad <laughs> so maybe I need to tap into that library ahead of time and have a few go-to's that yeah. will help my Honorable blood pressure yeah. come yeah. down a bit Dissipate. Exactly. Um, but take advantage of it because it's completely free the RTC is making um, the promise to help the library district offer Wi-Fi on all the buses, all the buses. Wow. and also the information on how people can access yeah, and this, this is the amazing. Event that, this was the event kickoff. Uh, you were there, and uh, again, just the fact that all of the buses are going to have the Wi-Fi, plus then you can get the app for the library district. It's cool. And I just mentioned, you know, I grew up in that community just a few blocks out, and it would have been amazing to have had this type of accessibility to content yeah. when I was younger. <laughs> Same here. Um, we just had to carry everything in a really heavy backpack. Yeah, it right. wasn't like in our palm, right? And so um, just I, I love how technology is bridging, making bridges to, to be able to be better informed. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and also kind of chill a bit too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, like say, Councilman, our day, you had to go to the library, you had to pull out the card stack, look through that to figure out where everything was. Now, hey, it's just easy. It's, it's at your just fingertips. Your phone. Exactly. You're just kind of clicking through it. So I want to just encourage everyone, to, highly yeah. encourage everyone to take advantage of this. Yeah, don't miss the chance. That's, that's great. And help great us program. promote it. Yeah, yeah. Spread the word, yeah. whether you're a school teacher or a you know, we all have that li inner librarian in us, so <laughs> let's make sure we tell everybody about it. Exactly right. It's free. It's, it's, it's gratis. And that's the best part, exactly. And then, uh, Councilwoman, speaking of cool technology, you posted this on Facebook. You said, beautiful day to take part in the Vegas Tech Alley event with Councilman Brian Knudsen and State Senator Mo Dennis in the Arts District. Great things are happening in Ward 3. So tell everybody what Tech Alley is all about. So Tech in the Alley is something that um, we as a city help support and it's, it's a shared vision of bringing a lot of entrepreneurs and tech startup folks that are very, very savvy with the, the technology space, but we're also trying to kind of show them what we're offering as a city. Yeah. And so we have space at the Innovation Center that we're trying to offer for folks, because sometimes when you're a small budding startup, everything is complicated, everything is hard, you're trying to get your concept right, yep, and yep. we try to work with you so that you, you do get it right, and hopefully as you grow and you expand, you decide to make Las Vegas your, your, your home. permanent yeah, home. Exactly. Um, definitely helps us make sure that we're bringing some high-tech jobs to our folks here. 
Um, and then also, you know, that business is good for, for our city. Anytime for sure. that there's a budding business that's going to continue to grow, look for a bigger space, look to hire folks. And those those wages are pretty good mm -hmm. wages that sure. they, they start off at. So we're just trying to build a supportive ecosystem and, and continuing to foster that and see it grow. We saw that we were kind of running out of space at the um, original Innovation yeah. Center off in the Bank of America building off yeah, of 4th Street. And um, we're looking to expand it. And we're just That's there great. also to hear from that tech community about how we can be more intentional, how we yeah. could be more supportive as a city. Um, and so just there's a lot of buzzing cool. things happening. And um, I love that so many folks are looking at Las Vegas as a exactly. possibility to, they're leaving California, Silicon yeah. Valley, San Francisco, mm -hmm. LA. And so that's very encouraging to say that we're in the top field. Uh, there are a lot of people looking at other cities, but it's, it's encouraging to hear from them that they, they looked here and they like that uh, we're a very um, friendly city to work with, but then also there's other things going for, for us um, that they are very encouraged by. So. Exactly. And Las Vegas, you may not associate with uh, tech, high tech, but they're coming here and mm -hmm. we've got quite a few businesses that are already locating right here, exactly. right in the downtown, right in Ward 3. Absolutely. So, and yeah. so uh, it was uh, good to hear even from one of them recently that he hired three UNLV School of Engineering um, students, yeah. computer engineering, and so that that's so awesome to the idea. have a place for them to land immediately. Exactly, exactly. Very cool. Well, good luck to all of them. So glad you were part of that. And you've been busy. Uh, you know, you have been out there making sure your constituents have contact with you. You've done like four town halls here in the last, just as well since you've been on the show last. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we wanted to make sure we heard from folks about the need. Um, we know that, you know, through COVID-19, it's had just disproportionate impact on certain communities. And obviously, uh, being a mom of a fifth grader, I know that the um, whole online schooling situation wasn't necessarily the easiest for all of us Tough. to navigate. So I wanted to make sure that we were listening um, now that there's an opportunity uh, for further investment in our kids, the school district is going to receive, um, you know, almost one point. Uh, well, no, I don't want to exaggerate. I think 700 million is about the figure that they were going to receive in extra ARP monies. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we wanted to just really gauge the community. What are things that you saw your yeah. kids need? That money could go toward, right? And, yeah. and it's good too, as a council person, so that then we're thinking futuristically about programs that we're lacking mm -hmm. and how we could hopefully bring those programmings to our community that are, are expressing um, a desire to have yeah. them offered closer to them. Um, and then the other two with, were with the county as well. The county is getting, just like we're getting 130 million in terms of ARPA money, um, but there's a lot of need. Uh, yeah. That's one thing that I came away, a lot of mental health needs, a yeah. lot of social, Heard emotional yeah. mm -hmm. needs um, and investment in trying to make up those arrears because it's not the same to learn through a computer screen than someone who can see how you're processing yeah. the information. It's just, I can't even imagine as a teacher how you're trying to keep track of your kids, yeah. but how you could best assist them if you're not seeing where the missteps are, you yeah. know? And, um, I just hope we're going to come together and be able to offer those supportive yeah. services to them moving forward. Well, the first step is listening, and that's yes. what you guys did, exactly yes. that. And the students, especially the high school students, said a lot of mental health is needed. Yeah. And heard a lot. A lot. Of, We've heard that consistently since the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. It's a war on people. The whole thing over all these months is The really, worrying, the yeah. anxiety. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a lot of, you know, more anxiety issues sure. in, in our youth, and we just have to make sure that we're giving them what they need so that that anxiety diminishes over time. It's not going to happen just by wishing it away, but we need to work towards right, exactly. helping them I agree. I feel agree. safe. Well, speaking of anxiety, Councilwoman, that's a perfect uh, segue <laughs> into what we're going to talk about next. We need to take a short break, but when we return, we give you details on a rental assistance program that's helping keep residents in their homes. That's next, so please stay with us. <laughs> Así suena cuando es demasiado. Así se siente el estrés. Y así se siente la ayuda. Si perdiste un trabajo, te preocupa qué vas a comer o no puedes lidiar con el día, 
nosotros te podemos ayudar. Envía el texto estrés al 211211 para encontrar una solución. Welcome back, everyone. It's no surprise many in our community have been struggling to stay in their homes after the challenges created by the pandemic. But there is help. Here to talk more about rental assistance is the city's Deputy Community Services Director, Arcelia Barajas. Arcelia, thanks so much for being here. This is such an important topic. Councilwoman and I were just talking about the anxiety that's been created by the pandemic. People are afraid for so many things, including whether or not they can afford to stay in their home or their apartment. I know, David, and I sit on the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, and um, just recently, last Thursday, we were at our meeting, and we had one of the employees bring some of her clients saying, these are folks that have a voucher, and they're yep. being kind of squeezed out of their living space because their landlords have um, decided to up their rent. In some cases, we're hearing a couple of hundred dollars to six hundred dollars, yeah. and so how do they make up yeah. that when their rate of pay is not keeping up with that yeah. kind of a hike right and so i um, super excited that we have received federal funding to help support our folks stay housed because we know that health is very very contingent yeah. upon being able to keep that stability and yeah. that roof over our heads and so um, i think to talk us more about this new launched raft program we brought arcelia barajas from office of community services and arcelia can you help the community understand the differences between raft and chaps because i think a lot of people have been hearing about chaps over time but it's important they know now what is yeah, raft those are the two, the two different programs yeah thanks for still there yes no thank you thank you for having me here to talk about this program um so our the raft program was launched by the city of las vegas um last month october um, august 23rd and it it's not very much different from CHAP, it's just in support of CHAP. So what we found is that there's just a huge need. And so the city decided to run the program. If you can recall, we actually ran a similar program with our CARES funding a while back ago. So we just wanted to continue to provide these service to our city of Las Vegas residents. The programs utilize the same funding, so a lot of the eligibility requirements are very similar. And our goal is to kind of run these programs parallel so that people can apply for the assistance through either portal. Uh, Arcelia, what is, what is the difference between RAF, the RAF program, and the CHAPS program? What, 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 is, what are the subtle differences so people kind of understand the two? Yes, so um, I believe that currently the CHAP program is still using um, an older funding source. Um, so some of their um, requirements regarding, um, for example, the self-attestation forms may be a little bit different. Requirements regarding landlord applications may be a little bit different, but the differences are very subtle. and. Um, Generally, if you are eligible for the RAF program, you're also eligible for CHAP. Okay, and I think the question that, that uh, Councilwoman and I want to make sure that, that we get an answer to to get the word out is, who can qualify right now? Who's eligible for this the, this funding right now, Arcelia? Correct. So for the RAF program, it is just um, eligible or open to City of Las Vegas residents. Um, the CHAP program continues to be eligible to um, all residents that have applications in the system. So beginning August 23rd, CHAP will not assist City of Las Vegas residents until our funding has been exhausted. And then they will continue to assist our residents after the fact. So currently all City of Las Vegas residents who want to apply for rental assistance, new applicants will have to apply through the City of Las Vegas RAF portal. And so Arcelia, just to be clear also, um, the folks applying for our raft program, they have to be in arrears as of July of 2021, correct? Um, do we go much further than July? Yes, actually, um, the program has eligibility for up to 18 months. So they'll provide assistance for up to 18 months of arrears, as long as they meet all of the requirements for eligibility, such as demonstrating an impact by COVID and income eligibility guidelines. However, if there is a tenant or resident that has a prior application already pending in CHAP for previous months, then they will be advised to continue through that CHAP process so that we don't have any duplication of efforts and benefits benefits within the two systems. And then also important to note is that we have some partners that are helping folks fill out that application and upload things that sometimes our community um, don't have the tools or the means to do. And so um, can you mention the three partners that are helping us out in this effort? Yes, absolutely. So we have the YMCA, 
that is supporting us with these efforts. We have the Boys and Girls Club as well as the House of Immigrants. So all three nonprofit organizations have all of the capabilities to assist our residents with applying for the program, uploading any documents required for the program, and also helping them um, file notices um, if they have received eviction notices. Okay, so in Ward 3, Immigrant Home Foundation is located at Rafael Rivera Community Center, and they're the ones that are doing the work with the community. So if you know anybody, make sure you send them their way and they'll assist them. Yeah, that's great. And then, uh, I, a great point, Councilwoman. And then Arcelia, uh, to get the process started, what should people do? They've, they've gotten a notice uh, from their landlord that they're behind, they, they can't make their payments. What should, what's the first step? So the first step is to log on to our City of Las Vegas website if they do have access to the internet. Um, we have a dedicated page that will provide um, information, answer any questions they have regarding eligibility of the program and what they need to do to um, apply. We have a dedicated portal set up for individuals to apply and upload documents. If they don't have access to a computer or access to um, technology that will help them upload documents, they can reach out to any of these three organizations that I just mentioned and they will um, support them in the process as well. All right, that's a great, a great effort and uh, very timely. Councilman, like you said, a lot of people are stressing a lot because of not being able to, to make their payments. Rough, rough right now. It so. is rough, especially um, because I'm hearing from folks who you know, um, they were a two income household, yep. one of them lost their job, hasn't been able to find another job, and then the other person keeping on them with some income, they scaled their hours considerably and they haven't gotten restoration of a 40-hour work week. And so when you think about someone only working three days and living on a three-day income where there used to be two, it, it could get stressful really yeah. quick and you get behind the ball really fast. So Help um, is there. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Make Arcelia. sure you share yeah, this. Exactly. And I believe landlords can help their tenants apply for this much needed assistance. So if you're a landlord and you know your tenant is behind and they live in the city of Vegas, help facilitate the process for them because it could be point. a win-win. Great point. Well, uh, this is a great segment. I'm sorry we're out of time here. Uh, Arcelia, thank you so much. Uh, great information from you. We really appreciate it. And uh, everyone out there, we always want to make sure that, uh, that you know that you can uh, reach out to the Councilwoman. If you have something you'd like to share with her, Councilwoman Diaz, you can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also contact her just by picking up the phone. We still do that here, 702-229-4623, or send her an email. Her address is odiaz at lasvegasnevada.gov, and one of her uh, great staff or she will get right back to you on that. So great job, a lot of great information today. and. Uh, Looking forward to have you back in six weeks. It'll be here before we know <laughs> it, it, David. It so well. again, happy Hispanic Heritage yeah. Month to everyone. Yeah. Stay healthy, stay safe. And again, let's not uh, you know, lower our guard against COVID. It's still around us. We know the Delta variant is very aggressive and let's keep our families and our, and our, um, and our just everyone we love around us in our circle safe. Yeah, here, here, Good. well said. Well, folks, don't miss our next show beginning on September 30th with Mayor Pro Tem and Ward 4 City Councilman Stavros Anthony. You can also catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget, you can also watch for our QR code at the end of the show to subscribe to our newsletter. And, of course, you can also watch us live on the Internet at KCLV.TV. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.